Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is part 8 of the Float Lock Vice Build. In the last part, you'll note that I pretty much finished the vise itself, so now I'm ready for the mounts for the vise. But I think I'll start out with, rather than making the lock, the, the mount, in this case they call it a corner mount. So let's look how this fits up on the drill press and uh, decide how you want to do it. If you have a drill press such as this, and this is a delta, with what I call a production table, or some of you might call it the larger table with the uh, coolant trough in it, but it's considerably larger than the other, but if you have this kind of table, you may want to forget about the clamp that I'm going to show you and mount your clamp directly on the table by drilling a hole and that's how we did it at the high school and those were of course much larger drill presses than what you normally have in a basement so it would mount something like that and I'm going to talk about this clamp this mount in the next video which would be part nine but let's back up now to the drill presses with a smaller table more than likely you have a drill press such as this Walker Turner that has a relatively small table and if you do it is sometimes too cramped to try to mount this lock right here on the table or you may object to drilling a hole in your table so in that case we use the corner mount at least that's what AMF called this American Machine and Foundry and it works simply kind of like a C-clamp where you would mount it like this usually off to the left hand corner if you're a right handed person anyway tighten it up and put it in this position and this is what we're going to build today or a variation thereof and then the actual lock can be mounted there and it gives you that extra space and you avoid drilling a hole in your table all right, here's how I propose to make this, and this is actually a fabrication project, and there'll be a little welding on this as well, but you can certainly make it in any different way you want, and in fact, in the drawing that you're going to see in part 10, Ken, who made the drawings for me, designed it such that this piece, the clamp piece, will be bolted or screwed onto the flat plate here, eliminating welding. But that necessitates a rather thick piece right here to accommodate the two screws that would be drilled and tapped. I'm going to do it by quite a different method. But let's examine this first. This is a 3 8 bolt and there needs to be quite a large throat here so that you can hook this up around the casting on the drill press table. So that's why there's so much distance in here. Now looking at this plate at the top here, the hole here is also 3 8 16 tapped, but there's a purpose for these oh, projections, whatever you want to call these, and that is as follows. These serve as a stop so that when you mount it, pretend this is the bottom of the drill press table, that you push it up that far and it stops. Now, Either I or somebody else overrode it here a little bit because you, you can see the wear. But if you want this to be parallel to the table, you don't want to go here, clamp on that because you're going to have a gap in there and it'll, of course, it causes it to tilt. Now, rather than put a couple beads of weld, I'll put maybe some screw heads or something there to act as a stop. Because of uh, what I just told you here regarding two screws to hold it in place, this is actually made of two pieces, but that's fabricated and stamped and all of that. We can't do that. But it has to be rather thick right here also because of this 3 8 bolt. What I plan to do is to build it off of a C-clamp. So I'm going to sacrifice one of these C-clamps, cut it off, and weld it onto a plate. That's the way I intend to approach it. Now these two really are about this, the right proportion, but yet the screws are only 5 sixteenths. This one has a 3 eighths screw, same as the yellow one, 
So that's the one that I'm going to cut off, get it nice and square, and then weld it onto a plate. And here is the plate. This is 3 16 as is this. And uh, I rough sawn it, so it's going to be, oh, I got that written down, 1 and 3 quarter by 3, and of course by 3 16 thick. This has been laser cut, so I'm going to mill all four corners to square this up and get rid of any kind of, oh, distortion that it might have been by the heat. Also, I like to remove this with carbide because sometimes the laser cut or the plasma cut tends to be hardened and can damage a uh, high-speed steel cutter. So I'm going to do that all off a of camera, that is, prepare this piece. It's too wide right now, way too wide. I'm going to copy directly off of this. That's the size that I want it to be. See you in a few minutes. I might have spent more time on this than necessary. It certainly isn't necessary to mill all four sides. Anyway, the piece is one and three quarters by three by three sixteenths, and I really need to drill holes before I attempt to weld the clamp on there because it'll be most irregular to try to drill some of these holes. So, and there's three holes, at least the way I'm going to do it. I've already laid out the center hole. And by the way, when I use a fine point marker, it just shows that the layouts are not that critical rather than using a scriber. So that will be drilled and then tapped 3816. But again, I need to deal with these stops. So what I'm going to do here is to lay out and figure out where I need to locate and uh, drill and tap holes for these little 832 socket head screws which when screwed in place will serve I think nicely as a stop probably a heck of a lot better than these. I'm ready to drill and tap again this is laid out 5 sixteenths will, will be the drill size 3 8 16 tap and these other two are quarter inch in from the edge and the distance here is one and a sixteenth which allows about one inch for the stop from the end here. And you can certainly use different size. This is an eight. You could use a ten probably also. Don't make it too small because you'll break a tap off. This will be hard to tap material. This is just some cold roll drop off scrap whatever I had laying around that was 3 16 it's really unidentified but sometimes as tough drilling I'll go ahead and drill those I really want to do the tapping and the drilling of the big hole in the drill press or oh in the mill because I would very much like that hole to be perfectly perpendicular in both axes the other two could matter less <laughs> Well, it's looking pretty good. Holes are tapped and ready to go. Now, all I could think about for the last 15 minutes is I wonder if this material is weldable. If it's cast iron or malleable iron, possibly not. I'm hoping that it's forged steel. It looks like it might be a... I mean, I can't tell if that parting line is from forging or casting. I will soon know when I cut this and I have... And if, if it doesn't uh, well, I'll have to go with another plan here. Um, and by the way, this is a 3 inch clamp. And I marked that such that it's about the same size as this. I am now quite discouraged. This cut like butter. And I, it appears to be cast iron. And look at the chips. They look like, there's some steel chips in there too, but it appears to be cast iron that this will not be weldable. And there certainly isn't enough meat here for me to drill and tap. So, plan B here. Some of my larger clamps I know are forged, but they're almost too big. And I don't mind sacrificing them, and so what if I lost 25 cents here probably at an auction. But this C-clamp here by Cincinnati Tool, it's the Super Junior, you know, 
It's a smaller one. It doesn't have the screw size that I want, but I'm quite confident that this is steel and not cast iron. So I believe that I'm just going to have to switch my plans here and use this. I, I think it's not as wide right here as I would like for maximum strength, but I think I'm going to go ahead and saw this one off and see what the chips look like. Duh! All I have to do is read. It is in fact forged steel. Heat treated. Made in USA. I used to have several of these, but I don't know what happened to them. This was always one of my favorite clamps. I hate to sacrifice it. But of course it says heat treated, and I checked it with a file, and it's as hard as glass. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but I certainly am not going to be able to uh, saw it, so I'm going to grind it off. I hope it does not uh, become a problem trying to weld this in that it is heat treated. Probably not. All right, I ground that off with a four and a half inch grinder. Now, good luck on finding a steel clamp, by the way, if you're going to follow <laughs> this method. But I laid out a center line and then some other lines there that will guide where this is going to be welded. I think I'll cut a couple short pieces of angle iron that will serve as a clamping surface to hold this perpendicular while I tack weld it and then weld it. So that's what she's going to look like. And I think I'll have to move in about like this. So I want the screw to come in the approximate location as this one. I cut a scrap of angle iron from my garage door opener. Got it clamped with a pair of vice grips. And that's about again where I want the pad to end up. So it's ready to weld. See you in a few minutes. Well, it's a couple hours later. I had lunch and got this all welded up. Not the best weld, but I, and I have these two screws installed and ground flush on that side. I hope that I have enough clamping force with the smaller bolt and, for that matter, a smaller handle here. Whereas with this one, we got three eighths and we can put a wrench on it and get really torque it down. Let me put this on the drill press and see what it looks like. All right, the corner clamp is clamped tightly on the corner, and it seems like it's really on there secure. And I told you that I want this surface to be parallel with the table, and I, probably no need to check it, but uh, using a surface gauge, it is. But why wouldn't it be, as long as this piece isn't warped from welding, and it truly is in full contact with the drill press table. So it looks pretty good. Let me clamp one of the vices onto it and see how it looks. Reminder now that this is the prototype clamp and we'll be making another one in the following episode. But putting this on real quickly, you can see how that works with the other half on top. We can float it around and hence the name. Now the dimensions here will be most critical such that when you tighten this it doesn't lift the vise nor does it uh, allow the vise to be tilted in this plane. This, the vise needs to be flat on the table or you'll be drilling a crooked hole. Well I'm pretty satisfied with this clamp. Let's take another look at it. We really cannot make this plate any thicker than what it is, or there will be problems later on in fitting this up. As far as the clearance that we have between this rod and the table, you may not understand what I'm talking about, but nevertheless, we're not getting a full strength thread in 3 16 rod. It would, the material would have to be as thick as this nut in order to have full strength. And perhaps we should have used a fine thread for thinner metal, and you may consider doing that in your project. I will, I'm sure, paint this yellow. I like that yellow color. Probably paint this yellow along with uh, the clamping piece and 
the ends of the jaws. I see I've got some yellow paint here. I don't know if it quite matches. So I think in the final episode you'll see me painting and applying bluing. Now uh, again you will have trouble finding a steel clamp. I just know you will, will and I didn't give that much thought until I got in the middle of this video and realized that a good number of the clamps will be cast. So if you can't find a steel one that is weldable you'll have to go with plan B and that will be the way Ken constructed it in the drawings. I did a little experiment and since I have nothing to lose on this piece of scrap iron here I thought well I'll go outside and uh, throw a little weld on there and see what happens and and this is still hot I, I just did it two minutes ago and I'm surprised that I do seem to have a bit of a weld on it now I understand that there's plating on here I didn't remove the plating but perhaps it was not cast iron but some other kind of material with funny chips but it did seem to be weldable off camera I'll see if I can knock that apart with a hammer and see what it looks like I'm not going to show that to you but this pretty much concludes this video hope you liked it and I learned something myself especially the last uh, 30 uh, seconds here regarding this as opposed to this now if you can't come up with a clamp you'll have to use like I said Plan B. This concludes Chapter 8. See you next time in Chapter 9, Part 9, when we make this part. So long for now, this is Tubal Kane. I wasn't going to show this destructive test, but using a large hammer, I did knock it loose and break one of the wells. Let me see if I can finish it off here. It's still hot. So it was not a good weld at all.